Hello and welcome to another video on Total War Three Kingdoms. I am allowed to play 30 minutes of any Yellow Turbans campaign. For this one I've chosen to play with Gongdu. No idea if that's how you pronounce him or not. I don't actually know how to pronounce these guys, but I'm gonna play as him. I think... She, the, the, the narrator, the lady's gonna say it. Gongdu. There you go, Gongdu. Gongdu. So. We're gonna play as Gongdu. I'm not gonna do a first 10 turns like I did with the uh, other factions I was allowed to play for... Uh, well, I was allowed to do a video of 20 minutes on each of those. I'm allowed to do 30 minutes on this guy, so I'm just gonna play 30 minutes. First 30 minutes, if you will. Gonna be playing all this another Legendary, of course. I am going to be playing this one on Records Mode, so you guys can see what Record Mode is about as well. I mean, it's very similar. It, it Combat... like, it's mostly battles are much, much slower. Uh, which I kind of like. I honestly kind of like that, but I've also grown... Uh, romance has grown a lot on me as well, so I'm still not sure what I want to do. I think I'm going to focus mostly on Romance, but... Anyway, um, I'm not going to spend too much time here, because, again, the problem is that it's only 30 minutes, I want to play the game. Uh, but you can see some of the stuff that he gets, uh, and then Gong Du, his stuff is... His character specialization is that he gets more military supplies in enemy territory, and his armor for all spear infantry. Faction wide, I guess we can see when we get into the game. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys uh, watch the cutscene because we haven't watched one of those yet. So let's watch a cutscene, right? Huajin 汉室起于机心之上，天绝炎流，汉作以终，天下早已改其意志，公都深知百姓疾苦，举兵起义就在此时。I actually noticed the um. The subtitles are wrong there. I actually, I already uh, matches that to the developers, so they will probably fix that at some point. It says like Gongdu sees knows the people suffer. It's like I either sees or he either knows. He doesn't do both at the same time. Well, I mean, he could do, but not, you know, in the subtitle. Anyway, so this is how you start a campaign, and you get the Yellow Turban Rebellion information. You get four of these things if you want to watch them. You don't have to. It's kind of like a cutscene, but not really. But then, yeah, the Rise of Dong Show. But we're not going to do that. I'm also going to skip over this just so we can get into the actual gameplay. But you know, that's how you how you start a campaign. It's, it's it's as simple as that. So establish your power, Gongdu. Uh, as the Han begins to destroy itself, your opportunity has finally come. The Empire still has power, and we are few. So we must gather our strength before striking to the west and south for lands we could use to consolidate. But be wary not to let the Empire overwhelm you. When you're ready, there will be none who can stop our righteous attack. The yellow banner of war rises. So yeah, just you know, same old, same old. Um, we have to defeat an enemy force, we get this pull mace and a bonus experience. Now the actual main reason why I decided to play as Gongdu is because he has that awesome mace. He already has one, but the one he gets is going to be better than that. Uh, the only downside is that since, since I'm playing on historical mode, you don't really get to see that weapon in action. Uh, I'm actually not sure if he still uses it, but it doesn't, you know, it's not quite the same impact on, on uh, records mode as it is on romance mode. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, that's actually the main reason why I wanted to play him. And then I later on decided, let's do historical mode, because that's what people haven't seen on my channel yet. Anyway, uh, we also get this thing if we research reform. Now, reforms work a little bit differently. So, I have to immediately say, I know, well, I don't want to get into discussion of, you know, pre-order DLC, etc. People have a very skewed opinion on what it actually is. It's, it's not as bad as most people think it is, but let's not get into that right now. Let's just talk about the actual, you know, DLC, as far as I can tell you guys. Uh, and there are quite a few differences. The Yellow Turbans place relatively differently than other factions, and they have completely different units as well. Like, every single unit they have is not a unit you can usually recruit. So, their entire unit ro unit roster is different, although, of course, similar. Their basic melee spear unit is going to be similar to the other melee, basic me melee spear units, but still, there's, there's differences. Uh, I mean, that's the same in every Total War game. Um... Diplomacy, sorry, I'm going into court. Diplomacy, court is actually different by as well. By the way, as well, I'm trying to say too many things at once. <laughs> Diplomacy, uh, you can't, as the uh, yellow turbans declare uh, or do do any negotiation uh, except for peace. Um, for example, 
you will be able to once your uh, level goes up your yeah your rank i suppose so first you are devoted you become balanced when you're healed uh, it says you can make peace you can actually already make peace it's either a it's either that's not supposed to be the case they need to change it or it's just the tooltip is off which is more likely but you can already make peace and then as you go further in rank you can do more and more with diplomacy as well so that's another thing about the yellow determines the court is completely different as well as you can see here you've got local leaders and then these things whereas normally it's your administrators and then different ranks and your faction heir your um that other high rank prime minister prime minister so that's completely different as well there's a lot of different things about the yellow turbans. And then, the reason I started talking about this is the research. It, normally you've got that massive tree, now it's reforms, so you have to choose a reform, which then happens after four turns. Uh, whereas, with the other ones, you just choose it, it happens immediately. Uh, and then you have to wait five turns before you can do another one. In this case, you, you it's basically like old research. You do this, it takes four turns to get it done, and then you choose the next one, etc, etc. So there's quite a few different ones here. Um, I quite like the one down here, which is campaign movement range. So I'm going to go for that one first, I think. It doesn't really matter. We're only playing for 30 minutes anyway. I could choose whatever the heck I wanted. Uh, we got some ancillaries too. A clay ox, an eavesdropper, and a stone horse. Uh, another thing that's completely different that I completely skimmed over so far. I've talked about how units are different. Lords are different too. As you can see, this is not just a color. This guy is a legendary veteran. He happens to be the same, but yeah, veterans are... There's three different roles, essentially. Three different character... Um, ranks? No, not ranks. Like, roles, basically, yeah. Uh, and these guys are veterans, which means they are... Uh, they excelled holding out against many enemies, but susceptible to arm and piercing damage. So they're kind of similar to um, the... Vanguard, I think it is, from the regular game. Vanguard is really good at holding out against multiple enemies as well. But the colors are completely different because it's green and uh, and blue. And blue in the base game, well, green is the champion, which is good against other champions. And uh, blue is the scholar, which is really bad in melee and, and stuff against other champions, but is good uh, for supporting your troops, etc. So it's completely different, uh, which, is, again, is you know completely different from the main game, which is nice. So... You know, again, not going to go into the discussion of whether a pre-order DLC is something that should happen or not, because some people have different opinions on that. I have mine, I think it's fine, but I don't want to go into that right now. Um, but uh, the point is that there is at least enough of a difference between these factions to make them worth a purchase regardless, is what my point would be. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's murder these people here, because they're looking at me funny. So we've got uh, we've got a couple of yellow turban turban spearmen. We've got a guardian of the land, which is one of our unique units, I believe. We've got some horseback huntsmen, and we've got two units of yellow turban horsemen. And of course, since we're playing on records mode, our generals have their own bodyguard unit as well. So there's 90 men. I think, and don't quote me on this. I need to figure out uh, figure out enough of this. Actually, we're a night battle here. Um, don't quote me on this. But as far as I'm aware. The unit size is basically determined by what uh, type of role they have. So a scholar, because a scholar is supposed to be worse in melee, they also have different types, like different units. So, um, you know, different weapons and stuff. But as I, I also think, and again, that might, I might be wrong in this, that a scholar has less men in their bodyguard than a champion would or something else because they're not supposed to be good in melee. But I could be wrong. I just I have seen uh, different numbers, and that's kind of what I assumed. I think, well, one thing that is definitely true is that different types of or different roles of generals have different bodyguards. Um, these guys are the same, so I'd imagine, even though their horses are completely different color, they have the same weapons. Yeah, they do because they're both um, both veterans. But a different role would have a different cavalry bodyguard. Um, actually, also worth checking. Does he still have his massive mace? Yep, he still uses massive mace, so that's the same. It's just not going to have the same impact as it would in the uh, in the regular or in historical mode. We also have a lot of uh, vanguard deployments, but I'm I'm not going to bother with that right now. Uh, surprisingly, we have about a half of our army, more than half of our army's cavalry. In fact, two thirds of our army's cavalry because we only have three infantry units. Um, so let's just pop you guys up front and then you guys behind. So this is going to be an all cav based battle, basically. It's going to charge the shit out of all, everyone and just win. Because uh, they have archers, and we, we have two, but ours are cavalry archers, so... Um, I could try and go for the forest as well, but let's just start moving up. Now, one thing that's important in this is that uh, when you're playing historical mode, battles are slower in general. Um, fatigue makes them much more... is a much more important feature as well. So if your units are tired, they're going to be performing way, way worse than they would do if you're tired in romance mode as well. Um, 
So that's uh, something you have to keep in mind, but generally battles are just much slower as well. Uh, it'll take much longer to kill a unit or to route a unit, and it's just it's just slower. I mean, I don't know what else I, I can tell you guys about that. Um, but I've noticed that, for example, I love cavalry in the game so far, and I still like them in romance mode. Oh, hello. Uh, I still like them in records mode as well. But it is very clear that, um, that they move... Or they, they do a lot less damage. If you charge a unit in the back in, in romance mode, it just evaporates, it's gone. In uh, in this mode, not quite so much. Okay, let's keep triple speeding this. I'm basically waiting for them to get into position. And then once they are, I'll just charge in with these guys, because they've got shields. They'll be able to protect themselves fairly well against the archers. Uh, and then we just charge in with the cavalry from all sides. I should probably move these guys around as well, but that's not too big a deal. Alright, I think we're in a good enough position. I'm actually going to move up only you two. Um, and let's go on the normal speed and I'll actually start sprinting you and then I'll start sprinting you guys afterwards as well. And then I'm going to be like, yo, you guys make your way over here. Archers can actually start shooting on the way in as well. Okay, we're being shot now, so that's exactly what we want. You go over there. You go over there. Yeah, they uh, are getting shot, but they're not dying super fast right now. We're firing back as well now. They do have their um, axe band right here, which is not great. It means our cavalry is not going to have too much luck getting into those lines, but that's all right. I could still charge them, but since they're stationary, well, they're not stationary anymore, but if they're stationary, they are very good at just defending against charges. That said, looks like they've left a bit of an opening for me. Very kind of them. Start charging literally everything in. You guys go around there, you charge them, you charge them, you charge upwards you get in there as well and we run craven indeed so you can see this unit this cavalry unit here of theirs has just a sword they don't have a shield so this is a different type of unit sentinel you can see how they've got a different type of bodyguard as well which is good okay looks like we basically routed everything except for the general one to shoot him right here try and get back from charging into that unit and just come back here and kill off the general and make him route don't have to kill them all the way. I should just charge in here, see if that works. Just a morale debuff from being next to them might be enough to make them brow. General's gone as well, so that shouldn't be long before they go too. Still shooting as well. This unit's surprised. There we go. I was going to say, surprisingly, not willing to run away. Alright, cool. So there's our victory. This army just disappears. The first army in every campaign always just disappears. They don't have to fight it twice or don't have to finish it off or anything. Could do for the extra experience, but it's not really that necessary. So they're gone. And now another unique feature of the Yellow Turbans, which I'll showcase immediately too. Played a little bit of this campaign so far, so I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Kind of. This is not new. Um, we got Tianfen captured. Um, do we... I mean, I guess we can release him. 200 bucks. I don't, there's nothing of value to steal. I'm not going to employ him. Even if I could, I wouldn't. Just means I have to pay more money for him. Uh, I'll take the little bit of extra income. So we're getting our, our better pull now. Um, and we need to we need to recruit a Yellow Turban Spearman Captain, which is kind of... A, it's an annoying quest, because I prefer if it was just a Yellow Turban Captain. Because I don't want the Spear one. I want a ranged, focused one. We need to also capture and occupy any settlement, which we'll do immediately. Because I will showcase that new feature that I was talking about. First of all, I will equip this new weapon. Oh, wow. Yeah, stats are completely different on this. Uh, I guess because it is, instead of a single guy, it's a whole unit. So it j it still influences him personally, I guess. Uh, that's cool, though. So so it's your bodyguard unit has certain stats, but your, your general doesn't have the same stats as his bodyguard. He still has his own unique stats because he still has his own unique armor, etc. That's cool. Um, the point is that normally in a base game, I think this is like 2,000... Armor piercing damage, this one is 3,000 armor piercing damage. So it's just like straight up way better. But in this case, it's just a tiny upgrade. Um, because, you know, it's, it just works in a different way. You can actually give the other one to him as well. He's currently using this, so it's like 40 40. This one is 0 72. Since it's, you know, since his bodyguard unit has its own stats, I think I'm going to give him, him a pull axe or a, a pull as well to end up mace. They could be mace brothers. That sounds good to me. Uh, anyway, so then the, yeah, the other thing about the yellow turbines is you can. Annex any yellow turban rebellion town for free, as you'll see here. So we can just annex it. Doesn't cost us anything. It's now just mine. We just integrate. And then, you know, this is now my town. So there you go. We got a new mission to construct or upgrade a building. 
which we will do as well. We also have, uh, we can't see him right now, but just just around the corner is Ma Tang, uh, who will be attacking us momentarily. So that's going to be another cool defensive battle that we can do immediately. So we've got the public workshops right now. Uh, I've kind of, I've learned basically what all the buildings do now. Well, not like, you know, every single building and every single upgrade, but I've kind of, you know, got a, an idea of how I want to build each and every town. Um... You can go super heavy on like farming and then the farming house. Although to be fair, these buildings are once again different uh, from this is another thing. Buildings are completely unique um, for the yellow turbans as well compared to the regular factions. So normally you've got this farming building and then you've got the farming house or well whatever it is. It's the the, the building for the regular the other factions, but it's called differently. It has like an increase in in uh, how much food you get. So like a plus fifty percent, plus thirty five percent, etc. The further you upgrade it, the, the better it gets. Um, so you can build like super heavy on on, on uh, um, farming in certain provinces, especially where you have something like uh, farmland, like a uh, farmland resource, essentially. In this case, though, we already have this 100% or 100 uh, income from industry. There's another building that gets another 100, uh, which is the inn, except when you're playing as the other turbines, it's actually only 50, uh, as you can see here. So there are, again, there's massive differences. Uh, I've also found out, or been told, in fact, by some of the other people, that the uh, Forges is quite a solid building as well, compared to the one that the regular factions get. Uh, but yeah, another thing, you know, every every building is different. Also, the yellow building that you'll see, every fa well, yeah, I think every faction has one. It's the unique building for that faction. Uh, so they've got the Guerrilla Warfare unique building, which gives more post-battle loot income and military supplies. I'm just going to go for the communal in here, because I want that extra little bit of income. It's not a whole lot, but it, it all adds up. So, um, with all that out of the way, I should probably give these things. I totally forgot to do that before I did that first battle, but I'll make sure I do it now. So we've got a follower, which is the authority guy. Uh, it's pretty irrelevant right now. I'm actually going to just leave that out completely. So extra instinct or authority. Let's just give you the authority and give you the instinct. It doesn't really matter right now, to be honest. Normally, I wouldn't even really give these away. Um, I I tend to like try and color match everything, uh, which you'll see in my playthroughs, which will happen soon, very soon, in fact, really, really, really soon, guys. <laughs> really soon. Uh, anyway. Um, we haven't got any diplomacy to do, because as I said, we can't do anything except for peace, but no one wants peace with me because I'm a disgusting rebel. Uh, we've got nothing else to look at beyond that, as far as I'm aware right now. So let's end the turn. And we'll see that uh, Ma Tang. There he is. I'm going to show up immediately. Oh, he's going to siege me out. All right. I'm probably going to take attrition right away. Oh, no, no. I've got six. So I've, I've got one turn before I take attrition. I will sell you out, though. Because I don't want to take attrition. So Ma Tang shows up with his uh, Kiang possibly mispronounced again, very likely. Uh, Marauders, um, two units of G Militia, two units of Archer Militia, two units of Axe Band, which are actually just recruited, so they are very much dead. Dead. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't build our building because of that either, so we didn't even finish our mission or anything, which is uh, sadness, but that's okay. We'd probably get a garrison here, although I don't know if it's actually going to be half dead or not. Yes, it is. Okay, so even though we integrated, we annexed the town, it's still half dead, so we still kind of work off our own Population. That's interesting to know. Alright, it's actually slightly in his favor, apparently, which is probably why he's decided to uh, siege me out rather than just make me, s or uh, just, you know, uh, attack the town, which I would have preferred if he did, of course, because we got the towers, now we don't. But that's okay. We have mass amounts of cavalry, and cavalry, even though this is historical mode, is still very strong. That said, one thing you gotta keep in mind now playing uh, records mode, especially. Or, well, no, specifically playing records mode, is that all enemy leaders also get cavalry now. So there's all, well, you know, unless there's less, but generally there's uh, there's free generals in an army, which means there's always going to be free units of cavalry. Unless there are certain lords that don't have cavalry, but as far as I'm aware, general bodyguards are always cavalry. So that's another thing you got to keep in mind. That there's, there's going to be a lot more cavalry to go around, so you can focus heavily on cavalry yourself, but there's still going to be those three generals you got to take care of. Which, you know, is similar to Shogun 2, so that's not, not a huge deal. But still. So yeah, infantry-wise, we're uh, massively outnumbered again, I think. But you have some uh, garrison units, but that's like 25 in each unit, so that's not really something to write home about. I mean, that's... 
That's it right there. <laughs> Bit pathetic, but I give us a, a couple archers. Why not? Shove them up here. And then we got some People's Warband and Peasant Warrior. So again, these are unique to our faction. <sighs> this is completely pointless. Let's just put them somewhere. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be able to protect or do anything with them, essentially. Um, also, yeah, one thing I noticed is that uh, these guys use... Oh, no, they were actually... Okay, they've got a sword. It looks, it looks kind of like a spear, but it's a sword. These guys, however, they use a pitchfork, which is still considered a uh, sword infantry. Or, you know, not a spear infantry. Because there is an actual um, spear... People's spear or something. It's like, yeah, it's basically just a peasant spear band. Uh, but th these are actually swords. So that's good to know. Oh, I forgot about the... Uh, sorry, my... Captain, my captain. <laughs> you want to join too? All right, you can come in too. Go on, then. Right, is he coming towards me? Because it certainly looks like he's moving towards me. Yes, he is. Alright, so he's, he's got those Kyang Marauders, which are fairly solid uh, early game uh, cavalry units. So we got to be careful of those. It's really going to be all about the cav. In fact, I'm going to use my cav aggressively again. So I'm going to pop you with them, pop you here, and just kind of hope my infantry does alright. This is a very wide unit, by the way. We can bring those cav units very wide. Oh, them as well. Never mind. It's not new, apparently. I just... Don't know what I'm talking about, apparently. Uh, a little bit scared of these two, though. I think I'm gonna actually bring the three of you. Fine, I'll do it like this then. Over here as well and start shooting at them. We also have Flaming Shot, which I don't think I'm gonna be using. We must have that unlocked because of him somehow. Or maybe... I think that's... Yeah, it's a general thing, isn't it? Oh shit, they're coming rapido-like here. We gotta get over here quickly. Let's back you guys off a little bit. I might want to bring a spirit. Let's bring you guys over. And then, yeah, if we fire at that unit for a bit, we can at least weaken it to some degree. Because the actual stuff is coming in now, so we got to be careful. Okay, that one's still coming over. Have we done anything to that? Killed a couple dudes. Fire at him, please. Let's actually make our way over here a little bit as well. He's going very, very wide. Maybe I should just charge him. I'd like to kill a little bit more though if I can. Alright, so we're being shot at right now. I'm gonna let these guys get shot. I'm actually gonna put you guys up front as well to be shot at as well. You're gonna die very quickly. But I'd rather my, uh, these extra units get shot than my, like, main dudes. These will wreck my cavalry is what I'm afraid of. Spears are so good against Cav. Like, if this unit charges into this unit, it will evaporate. This is something I really like about this game. Actually, let's not do two units. It's back to, basically, like, Ashigaru units, essentially. Like, Yari Ashigaru. If, if they charge into a... Uh, oh, God. Okay. Into a spear base unit, they will actually just get absolutely destroyed. Like, that's not an overstatement. Okay, well, that's just a shitty unit that we don't care about, so that's all right. I'm gonna try and have to come in there now though. I'm gonna have to kill those guys a little bit. Uh, I need to use my cavalry more offensively here, so I can't just let you guys hang back and do nothing. I'm also not happy I've got two units here. Hopefully that unit will break soon though. Okay, it looks like we're being charged, so let's counter that. Should have kept you over there. Um, I'm also gonna put all of you in melee. I'm gonna charge you through there. I don't care about the garrison units dying there, to be honest, so. Okay, you managed to get in there. I don't know if you broke that one unit or not. No, but you definitely did a lot of damage, so that's okay. Enemy unit flees. That's good. I like it. Okay, charge into them. Our ranged cavalry in this game as well, they're not bad. They're much better against infantry than against something like that. But they're not bad at all. Okay, you've done your job there. Let's send you back. I'm going to try and get my uh, cavalry out of here now, I think. Let's get those spears into all of their stuff. Uh, let's have you actually charge in there. I need to kill that general off if I can. You guys, yeah, see, this is, this, is, this is what I mean. This is historical mode for you. We've been fighting that unit for a good few minutes now. And they're just not dying yet, anyway. It just takes a lot longer to kill stuff, which is good. Because, you know, that's historical mode. We don't want stuff to die instantly when you look at it. Which is nice as well in, in romance mode, but... 
if you are playing historical mode, you want it to be a little bit more historical. I don't like how low my general's getting here, though. And that unit's wavering, which means morale's going to drop soon. That one of theirs is going down pretty rapidly as well, though. So far, it's a bit of a mosh pit right here. Another thing, of course, you'll note is that there's no unit abilities anymore for the generals. Uh, one thing I would have liked to have seen is if you at least got, like, a rally or uh, an inspire or some kind of ability, just anything that sets them apart from just regular units, but maybe that's something that'll come over time. Who knows? Let's give ourselves a charge into this blob right here. This General Darius is getting very low. We need to have these infantry units around. Yeah, I definitely should have charged them there, actually. Because they were already quite low. Do you have any cav around? That's just... Nope. Not doing anything. That's good. Uh, let's bring you guys out as well. We've still got these two here. Fighting those two now. Oh man, even my generals. See, this unit is just not dying anymore. Let's bring you guys out of there. I don't want to have this unit die. So you're gonna have to just fight them by yourself for a bit. They're super tired too. Once unit gets units get tired, they just perform really poorly. Okay, we're doing all right here though. I should have charged in here. I don't know why I tried to charge through that. We actually killed that unit off already as well. To be fair, yeah, just charge in here once or twice and they will route, and then that should be that for this battle. There it goes one unit. The other two units are wavering. Maybe I should have stayed in combat there, to be honest, but that's okay. She's routing off. Okay, let's get you in here as well, then. Enemy's running, so that's one more unit. Now we just need the other one, the last one, to run. The Axe Band, who started with 48 units and are somehow still alive. That's impressive. And then we've got uh, Pang, Pang De and Ma Tang himself, which is not actually... I don't like that fight there with you. He's losing morale pretty rapidly. She's gone. He's got, okay, so he does actually have an ability. So there are some generals that do have an ability. That, that's good. Okay, so let's just uh, finish this off now. How's that battle over here going? Oh, you actually won in the end. Good. Victory's growing ever closer. Good. Ma Tang is uh, wavering. So I think we've got this one under control. Let me just uh, triple speed. Oh, God, you're a bit low down. Let's get you out of there before you die. For... Okay, that's fine. As long as you don't die, that's okay. 31 men left remaining. He's got very high morale. Okay, he's gone. I said he, <laughs> he's got very high morale. Literally two seconds later, routes off the battlefield. Alright, it'd be nice if we could kill him. Pang De. Kill him as well. Archer's not doing a whole lot. Okay, did we actually... I think we managed to kill him. Or did he get away? No, I don't see anything over here. So I think we killed him off. You've come back as well now. Let's actually just send you guys in. Get the cavalry around. My own cavalry is deciding to almost route here as well now. So it wasn't the, the easiest fight in the world, but we've gotten him in the end. Just hope my own generals don't die now. Eight men remaining, seven. This guy is really just not planning on leaving, is he? Fighting to the death, it seems. He's super tired. His morale can't be good anymore. He's not wavering, though. I mean, we're wavering, but he's not. This is impressive. This is an impressive display. He's just by himself now. Let, oh, there he goes. All right. Well, <laughs> maybe he was. Maybe it's one of those medieval two features fighting to the death. He just didn't. He couldn't leave. We were in the way, essentially. I don't know. Either way, we won in the end. It wasn't even that bad, to be honest. And these guys are a bit low now, but that's not too bad. Matang got 151 kills himself. Not too shabby. Almost completely dead though. So that's all good. I will take the thousand bucks here. Okay. And then we got some level ups. So let's do that real quick. Uh, campaign movement range is always nice. Another thing, this is actually completely new as well. Another thing that's completely new for the yellow turbines. The yellow turbines are completely unique. Like, there's so much different about them. Oh my god, 25% general's bodyguard size. That's pretty solid. That's very solid. Um, there's a lot of good things here, but I really like. Campaign movement range, so I'm gonna go for that. Wait, I have two points available? What the hell? Did I level up twice there? Well then, let's go for uh, that one. And then you, yeah, you've got one point, okay. That makes more sense. You are gonna get yourself 
running speed for his own retinue. Ugh, more movement. That's own army. That's not one commanding. That's really solid. Okay, and then we'll finish them off to finish off this episode. Or this video. As this is not this is not going to be the first episode of my Let's Play if I decide to Let's Play with this guy. This is just going to be a video that I'm allowed to do. So that's going to be that. Uh, you know, first 30 minutes. couldn't Wasn't able to do too much, but I showed a couple of battles. Showed uh, basically everything that's new about the Yellow Turbans compared to the regular faction. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, and I hope you guys are a little bit more convinced about how Yellow Turbans are definitely not, you know, just a cheap addition to the game as a pre-order DLC. That's not the case at all. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Another video will be up tomorrow, probably, uh, showing a multiplayer battle with Lionheart, if everything goes well, uh, showcasing the Yellow Turbans in battle once more. And after that, very soon, not allowed to say when, I don't think. Don't even know if I'm allowed to say that very soon something's happening, but yeah, just expect videos on this game pretty soon. Very soon. TM. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and goodbye. Finally, if you are thinking of purchasing the game yourself and supporting the channel at the same time, please consider using 2Game, the store I am affiliated with. You get the game for quite a bit cheaper than you can get it on Steam. You still get a Steam key, of course, it goes through Steam like a usual game does. Um, you get a discount, you even get an extra 10% off if you use the special code SMARTDONKEY at checkout as well. You can do this from wherever you are in the world. Um, it supports me, you get the game at a discount, it's a win-win situation. So please consider doing that. Thank you very much.